come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're a movie review podcast that comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not. Uh, we ask that you do us a favor. Then let's take care of some housekeeping. All you got to do is go over to wherever you found us and hit that like, subscribe button, the little uh, hit the little ding bell on YouTube, right? If you found us there, we have a lot of people listening to us on YouTube. It's amazing. <laughs> Stop talking about my ding bell. <laughs> the ding bell. The ding bell. What do you call it? The little I'm alarm? Sure that's the proper term for it. The little bell. Uh, all of that stuff help. And Hey, you can write us a review too. We'll read your reviews. If you write them on iTunes or Stitcher or wherever you found us, uh, later on in the show. So, uh, all, like I said, all that stuff helps us get found by other folks like you. And we want to grow the freak show family and become the greatest, fastest growing podcast in the galaxy galaxy. If we were one of those, uh, podcasts who like, pumps out a shirt every week just based on something they said in the podcast uh click that ding bell would be our shirt for this week <laughs> <laughs> click that ding bell, click that ding bell. john yeah. you know we would look back at those shirts and not remember what half that stuff we would <laughs> yeah we'd be like who said that and we why? do that we do what that with context we do that with mailbag people write in and be like remember when you said this like no no <laughs> <laughs> i don't, I don't. I don't even remember watching that. <laughs> and it's weird since we've been doing this in quarantine. I've been like pretty much like sober every single night <laughs> that we've been doing. Uh, well, anyway, sorry. The, um, um, well, uh, these are the internet radio superstars <laughs> that you're listening to starting with Holly, Kayla, Sean, and I'm Colin. And tonight we watched the movie that was chosen by Holly. Holly, uh, uh, what did we watch tonight, and who is the bomb in it? <laughs> tonight we watched a movie called Phantoms, and altogether now, Ben Affleck was the Affleck bomb. was the bomb yeah. in Phantoms. <laughs> Yo, he was, was the totally the bomb in Phantoms. <laughs> yeah. hey, that's that a, that's a quick that's summary of our mailbag. <laughs> yeah, you just, you just yeah. heard our mailbag. That was it. Yeah, let's never say it again. <laughs> that was, it was no less than like eight mailbags yeah that. i got don't worry i got them uh, i got them all written down i was actually so as we watch these in quarantine we're uh, uh chatting with each other during the movies and you don't know how much restraint i showed to not be saying that like every 10 minutes just to annoy the <laughs> shit out of you guys Good, <laughs> Yo, i was right. already annoyed with it after mailbags <laughs> yeah my I'm, phone I'm just kept pinging and every notification was just someone saying that yeah, that is a yeah. reference to was it Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back? I yeah. believe so. Okay, we're in that movie. They're poking fun at Ben Affleck for his worst movie performance in Phantoms. I don't know if that's true or not. What year was this movie made? 1998. And directed by? Directed by Joe Chappelle, not to be confused with Dave, which I kept saying mentally the entire time I was looking the stuff up. I kept reading it, Dave Chappelle. I even Googled Dave Chappelle. Just like, I couldn't get it out of my head. It's You're Joe. You're like, this seems yeah. wrong. I was like, he directed it? No, it's Joe Chappelle. Joe Chappelle. Yes, director oh. of the infamous uh, Halloween 6. Yeah. The- <laughs> Halloween 666. Yeah. As soon as I saw that... <laughs> Like internally, I was like, "Oh, they're all gonna hate." Me. <laughs> <laughs> you know that is a correct assumption. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, Joe Chappelle. He was uh, he was like Dimension for some reason. Dimension Films like thought that this guy was uh, like the movie fixer. Uh, that he was so talented that they gave him two feature films to direct, and then I believe he also fixed or like redirected Hellraiser four. Uh, when that movie had a problem, they they had yeah. had him come in and like do reshoots. <laughs> he's so not, he's like the he's, he's like the Joe Johnston of horror movies. Yeah, yeah. he's he's not credited on Hellraiser, no, right? No. Yeah, that was like an uncredited thing. So yeah. there may have been one other one I think that he might have fixed for them. I'm not he sure. He might have, but like I said, he's not credited on like anything else but TV shows. So yeah, he's most famous for The Wire now. He, after his stint at Dimension yeah. Films, he did a bunch of episodes of The Wire. Yeah. So he's done like just if it's a crime show that's been on TV and possibly on TNT, he's done it yeah. basically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, the big star in this movie is, of course, Batman himself, Ben Affleck. 
even though yeah. he's like the he's like fourth in the cast, it's like an and Ben Affleck kind of thing. Well, that's oh, yeah. what That's what you want. That's the one that gets you, you want in the little box. And. You get the yeah, little no, box that's the poster. Was was he that's and? The... Yeah, he was and in was the he? in the title sequence. He was and. Well done, Ben. Yeah, that's the Chris Pratt spot. Chris Pratt yeah. always got the uh, and Chris Pratt at the very end of all the credits. Yeah. I mean, he's coming off of Goodwill Hunting, making this. It, this is like the best time to be Ben, ben Affleck, honestly. It, it this really is his peak. Is this seriously yeah. like his first movie after Goodwill Hunting? Yeah. Get out, is it? So yeah, is- it's this and then Armageddon and Shakespeare in Love all this year. Holy This is wow. the best year to be Ben Affleck. So Reindeer good Games year. must have been like the next year. <laughs> Wasn't that a Dimension Films movie? Reindeer I think it Games? was. I believe so. I think it was. Yeah, That's a probably. bad movie. Yeah. Oof. Was I don't remember year. it much. I remember really liking it when it came out just because I liked Me any, too. I liked anything Ben Affleck was in basically because I was a 14-year-old girl. It was like everybody scamming everybody. That's like the thesis of that movie. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. Uh, uh, another question. Who wrote this movie? Oh, there you go. Dean That's Koontz. Dean Koontz. Dean Koontz. This is our... We've had a couple of Dean Koontz movies on here, haven't we? I, I was going to ask, is he on the wall yet? I can't actually remember if we've done another. Dean Didn't, wasn't Coons. Watchers a Dean Koontz? Yes, it was. Dean Koontz. Watchers yeah. was Dean Koontz. Yeah. You're right. Um, was based on... I got to admit, uh, I have never actually read a Dean Koontz uh, book. Me neither. Oh, no? No. no I've read a bunch. I was going to say, uh, Sean, I feel like that's your bag. You're a resident Dean mine. Koontz I, expert. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, I mean, I guess so. Just out of process of elimination. But I've read a bunch of his books. <laughs> yeah. He, I always. I got into him way before I got into Stephen King, and I've read more Dean Koontz books. Let's see, I was on the flip side. I read a bunch of Stephen King, and I don't know why. I never, you know, um, yeah, and, and Dean Koontz movies, it seems like I've run into every once in a while, and yep. they never really leave much of an impression. But I assume the same thing is happening with him that happens with Stephen King, where, you know, whatever the, the, the secret sauce that makes Dean Koontz books attractive to people is left out of the movies yeah internal monologues or something sean, sean have you read, have you read this book no i have not read this one okay i'd because be curious it, though that's kind of like the impression that i was getting that it's it's that that same scenario where it doesn't necessarily translate as well because you have to leave so much out of a movie and, you know, you, you have such rich character development in these books that it's details you cannot put on a screen. Obviously, it would take forever to play out. Yeah. But also, like, it just isn't – it's just not a, a visual thing, you know? Well, yeah, and his tend to be more uh, – his books tend to be a little more fantastical, mm-hmm. um, bringing in elements that would – you can see how they could pare it down and be like, well, we can get rid of this element, and the rest of the movie plays pretty straightforward because they're right. getting – he gets some weird, like – he gets some, goes in some very weird creative directions you where don't say. people being like, <laughs> yeah, he, I mean, he does. I mean, weirder than like, you've never read a book. Like it's some real weird, interesting stuff. He's got some good ones out there. Well, this movie's kind of weird uh, where it goes. Um, well, it also has uh Leave Schreiber. Schreiber? Yeah. Schreiber. Schreiber. Schreiber is also yeah, in Schreiber. the cast. Uh, yeah. It's, it's funny. I mean, obviously our, our listeners, I I assume are familiar with the the poster by now. Either they remember it or they've seen it on our social media. At first glance, you think you're going to watch Scream. This is not Scream. Yeah, yeah. This is <laughs> they what want everybody you is to doing think that, that. Though they do, yeah. they want you to think that it looks like it, and you're like, oh, Rose McGowan, oh, Liam Schreiber. Yeah. Is this Scream? Mm-hmm. I mean, that was kind of uh, that's just what shit looked like back in the nineties. Yeah, but because well. Scream started like, that trend, though. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Scream started that poster trend. So, and, and this is the year after Scream Two. Yeah, there you yeah, go. And it's it's That's so true. funny because I just saw like a, a collage. I, it might have been on Bloody Disgusting or BuzzFeed or something of like all of the 90s movies that used that same facade. <laughs> I just saw that like yesterday and I was like, oh my God, there's Phantoms. <laughs> it's literally all of them. <laughs> it's all of them. It's Everything the most, post 96. The most yeah. boring poster art uh, like of all time when yeah. Photoshop was then. a big deal. I know. Yeah. They, used to, they used to hand paint this shit and it was fucking artwork. Now they're just like throw the cast on it. Well, it's worse than <laughs> it's just, it's a black, it's a black poster with, you see like these fate, you know, then they photograph. And the flip. Faces faces and, yeah. yeah 
And it's like, but, but, uh. but back then it was effective. I would see that post and be like, oh, it's going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> well, how come Peter O'Toole isn't in, on the poster? What? I mean, this is like your big selling. Because nobody knew. You've got they, Lawrence they, of they, Arabia they, right. in your movie. Yeah. Because they were not going for the uh, Peter O'Toole audience. No, they're going for me, the stupid 14-year-old that's like, this is going to be good. Like, that's who they're going for. <laughs> yeah, who's the fucking old guy? Lawrence, his name's Lawrence of Arabia. I don't know who this actor is. Yeah, this is like, it's sad to me to see, you know, like Peter O'Toole in movies like this. But I know, like, you know, ultimately, that's where all these guys who were, you know, in Shakespeare and stuff right. well, like that's that. Well, that's because they have that they have that great delivery voice that they've been using for oh, Shakespeare yeah. all these years, and yeah. they're like, "We need to get across some exposition, but we want it to sound real cool." Let's See, bring and, in Peter yeah. O'Toole, and it works because now, like years later, you know, back then I was like, "Yay, Ben Affleck," and now I'm like, "Yay, Peter O'Toole!" <laughs> like, I'm so excited for him. Yep, it's like you changed, not the movie. Right, yeah. <laughs> the movie's always the same, and now you're just rooting for different shit. <laughs> yeah man i yeah you're watching this like oh i hope they survive 20 years later god i wish these people would die right <laughs> yeah that's like when you start siding with the parents in a movie yes. and you're like oh right, i'm right. old now yes. like oh, right? those kids were being saying. too loud <laughs> or what's, what's even what's even worse i was just talking to someone about this is when you watch a movie that you watched as a kid and if you're like you know a preteen or whatever and you had a crush on the kid in the movie and now you watch it as an adult and you're like oh that dad's hot like <laughs> you know you're an adult you know you're an adult <laughs> well i have the i have my problem with it and now you know it's like watching you know they are always casting these guys who i think are too young to be sheriffs in yep. movies like yeah. they don't have any kind of they don't present any kind of no authority presence. yeah yeah they, they, yeah where it's like, oh, it's Ben Affleck when he's like 25 years old and he's the sheriff. Yeah. And yeah. he's it's been an good. FBI agent prior to that for a couple of years. Like, how old are you? You know, yeah, he's the like, Doogie Hauser of the shaving. police department. Yeah. I feel like I feel like they feel like they can get away with it because like, OK, maybe he did one year as an FBI agent and then the thing happened. And then now he's like in a small town and in yeah, a small town. You can, yeah, you can be a sheriff that young because there's nobody else to do it. Yeah, because this is uh, it's somewhere in Colorado, correct? Is where they, it's small town in Colorado. It is, yeah. They filmed it in Georgetown, Colorado. Okay, and this uh, we're introduced to the movie actually through so Rose McGowan and Joanna Going. Joanna Going, I've always had a crush on. She was in the reboot of Dark Shadows. I fucking, I fucking knew you were right? going to say that. I, oh, just, yeah. I was like, I was like, <laughs> Colin is going to say that he's had a crush on this yep. girl. I just knew it. She was uh, Victoria Winters in Dark Shadows when it came back briefly that. in the. <laughs> Um, that was the primetime NBC big budget dark show, well, at least for the time. Um, so actually, I was surprised. I'm like, well, are you going to cast those two as sisters? They look, you know, similar. Rose yeah. McGowan and Joanna going, and they, they are coming to this town. Um, so let me get this right. Joanna going is a doctor. Like that was mm -hmm. her office that they're going to, correct? Yeah. And yeah. she went to pick up her sister because Rose McGowan is like uh, an alcoholic or something. And she's picking her up to bring her to the 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 small town to get her away from the big it's, city. I thought her influence. I thought their mom was an alcoholic, and oh, she was picking her up right. to get her away from her mom for a while. Okay, I think so. Yeah, I, I don't think Rose is the one that had the problem. I think their mom did. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna say she's doing pretty good throughout this entire. I was movie like, she seems pretty stable. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. She, she seems very chill when shit's yeah. going down around her. She's just kind of like, eh, I think she goes know, into something. shock. She might. Did, did she play that well? I mean, I think maybe that's what they were going for, but yeah. did it come I off? So. I, was, I didn't. Uh... I was. Here is my thing. Like watching this movie now, I in my mind I was starting to criticize Rose McGowan. I was starting to think like, why was she a thing? What? But then the other part of me is like, you know what? I'm not going to criticize Rose McGowan. She's been through a lot of shit, and she deserves a lot of credit. So I'm not even going to say anything. She was great. When not going to say anything. I mean, I think. Uh, well, I mean, scream brought her a certain amount of attention but i think the charm tv show right i mean that was like yeah. is that a right around here with like did they I mean, put charm her in would know, right? i was like that's sean again yeah. that's that's my yeah i mean uh, i think so when did i think i'm gonna say charm started in 96 i'm just guessing okay so the, well they then they are doing the scream thing if we're gonna take someone from a hot cw show and put them in our uh, movie no and rose Charm's, mcgowan is <laughs> charm's started in 98 but rose mcgowan wasn't on it when they first started she oh, okay. came in as a as the third sister Probably like four seasons in, so she's not even on it at this point. Wait, it oh, started okay. in 98? Started in 98. Really? Huh. Yeah. I feel like it started so much earlier, but 
first episode, October 7th, 1998, ended in 2006. It does seem like it was just a straight 90s show. Holy shit. I know. I right? that long ago. It doesn't seem, yeah, it seems so Damn. weird. Damn. I think she was in a bunch of like indie, uh, she got her start, I think, in indie stuff. Jawbreaker? Them. Right. Jawbreaker. Are we going to bring, bring Jawbreaker back? Was she in like the Doom generation or something? I can't remember. It seems like she was in some other stuff well, back then. I mean, we got the technology. Let's look her up. That's right. Well, while you're yeah. doing that, the two sisters try uh, arrive in the town and they find to their horror that every single person is uh, dead. And so are they dead? Or gone. Or just vanished. Yeah, they most people are just gone, but then they find a couple bodies and discover that not everyone's physically gone, but not everyone's alive. Sometimes you're right, Colin. She was in the Doom Generation. Was that like? Let's see. Uh, No, she started off in class of 1999, uncredited. Oh, okay. (laughs) Yeah. Say, Uh, Encino Man was in 1992. I forgot she was in that. The Doom Generation, Biodome. She was in Bio following Polly Shore around for a while, huh? I think so. Scream right. after that, then yeah. then start away nowhere. You guys, kiss I and really tell. love Encino Man. I'm Phantoms. It. Oh, I love that movie. <laughs> I mean, we all love it. Do we, we all forget Devil in the Flesh? Yes, oh, I forgot. Right. Yeah. yeah, I remember watching that movie a lot. <laughs> Watch that one a lot. Yeah. Uh, why? Why after, did you watch the, a lot? Mom and Dad go to bed. Uh, just uh, the the articles. Um, <laughs> did you rewind a specific scene until the tracking wore out. <laughs> right? It's like, God damn it. Uh, 1999 was so Jawbreakers after this as well. Okay. And then oh, Ready to Rumble. Oh yeah. Also, a uh, really good Monkey Bone and a bunch of other stuff. Yeah. No, I mean because that was she was a known commodity at that point. I think uh, post post yeah. Scream. And into charmed, um, so so some of the people are are gone. Some of you know, there's a lot of like you can't find anybody. You just have empty stores and empty. But they do find, uh, they find like uh, not desiccated bodies. There, they do find people like lying face down on the ground, and they have you know these strange blue veins uh, that look like maybe they've been infected by something. But there's also like they find people's hands and not the rest of them. Or they find their heads in the oven, and not the rest of them. It's very strange and weird. And you're like, what the fuck is going on? That is very weird. And they yeah. think, why, just, really why the hands? What, hands? What? what? I'm still not really sure what that means to the rest of the movie. Yeah, neither do I, because why were the hands just there? I don't know. Well, Even I, knowing I what we know about who the antagonist is, I don't get what that... Yeah, I, don't get <laughs> I mean, neither. There, there was that moment when, you know, Peter O'Toole is talking about how it's like a spider and it might leave a snack for later, like a spider web. I'm like, is that what they were going for? That it leaves, like, bits? I'd, I'd like to think that the black stuff came up and whipped people away so quickly that heads and hands were left behind. That would In be the amazing. oven! <laughs> what? Why are the heads in the oven, though? Uh, I don't I like, know. I like I like Sean's theory that they just just <laughs> whipped off so quickly. But in my mind, yep. in my in my mind, I was like, does it just feed like a five year old and it just leaves a mess everywhere it goes? I mean, maybe. Like there's just or, like, or it's like you just like, find like um, a quarter of a hot dog laying on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> or it's like um uh I can only think of one example when it's fucking Thor in the first Thor movie where it's like I want more and he just makes a mess and, like he's a royal who doesn't clean up after himself when he eats he's like I'm a god I don't need to clean this shit up I mean that makes could, more sense considering could be that <laughs> well it's really uh because uh, this is a mystery you know we, we don't know what's going on here they do find um uh, this is uh at the, this point Sean was saying like this is like a Resident Evil uh movie and I was thinking, yeah. you know what this is really like? A Silent Hill movie. Cause yeah, it is. It looks like Silent Hill, uh, kind of. I mean, you're in a small town. Uh, you know, people are wandering around trying to figure out what's going on. They're going into different shops and strange stuff's happening. But then after they meet up with the, the next group of survivors in the town, then there's this siren that goes off. And then, like, the darkness yeah. seems to come. And I'm like... Is this, are we going into different dimensions here? Are they the phantoms? Is this going to be a thing where, like, you know, the army is going to show up, but they can't see them and all this? Uh, that doesn't actually happen, but. So know, many so, interesting ideas. Yeah. <laughs> These are all because I was like, I don't know what this, movie. what this movie's about. 
So they do meet other survivors in the form of Ben Affleck and Liev Schreiber and Nikki Cat. Ben Affleck, as the sheriff, wears a hat, a cowboy hat, because he I shouldn't. think in Calif- or in Colorado, you just you do. I think that's just a small town sheriff thing, because I feel like yeah. even in the Crazies remake, Timothy Oliphant was wearing like a cowboy hat. And that was Iowa. Oh, it was Iowa? Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, it's just kind of like iconic small town sheriff. I mean, look at, you know, Walking Dead. We've got Rick and his fucking sheriff's hat. Like, it's just, it's just. It's what Andy Griffith type thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. That's how you know the sheriff. He's got a cowboy hat. So True. there's still some sheriffs who wear cowboy hats. Oh, um, I would say mostly, <laughs> mostly the sheriffs wear cowboy hats. Um, so uh, the Texas, is that still part of the Texas Rangers uniform? Are we going to have to look this up? That's got to be. I um, guarantee that if you become a Texas so. Ranger, Literally. you have to wear a cowboy hat. I hope it so. Is, it is a sin if you do not. And probably still mounted, mounted uh, Rangers. Um, so the, uh, they partner up with these people, uh, you know, the, so the, the, the sheriff, I'm not sure how, he survived whatever took all these people or killed them all. Did it say Did they, they like went somewhere and they were coming back into town and they're like, Oh God, everybody's gone. And Hey, we found these two girls. Maybe it all happened at once. And they were like out of the sheriff's office while it was happening. Yeah. And they just I, missed it. If, if they did say something, I don't honestly remember, but it feels like there's a lot of this movie that they just jump in without explanation. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And yeah. there's things that happen like, they are well nikki cat gets removed from the movie very early he wanders out into a street and just like you hear him scream and <laughs> he's gone we're like what yeah because we we hear it sounds like a woman yelling for help so he goes to to check on her that's right we're also at some point hear somebody singing um from a a, a like a drain in a sink uh-huh. we're like okay there's people this is gonna be it or there's something living yeah. in the sewer that you know <laughs> Um, and then they are attacked by a giant moth. Yes. 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 Okay. Just out of nowhere because Silent Hill, right? You got creepy creatures just flying oh, around. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. what I was thinking. I'm like, okay, this is going to be because, you know, I mean, this, the town is situated. It's a little small town with mountains on either side. And I'm like, okay, so what you're setting up is the story where there's a silver mine or something over there and they dug too deep and they found something that has come up and taken the whole town or whatever. Well, it doesn't actually, we don't ever go there really. <laughs> I was kind of yeah. disappointed by it. But yeah, that would go to the mist thing, or there was a government laboratory nearby up in the mountains and something got loose. No. Uh, we're just attacked by this giant moth, which they, in one of the, the, the most nineties scenes in the movie, they unload on this thing. It comes to the window and it's flapping. And so all of all four of the characters are five at that point is there four or five, uh, unload on this thing with multiple rounds of, or multiple clips of ammunition where I was actually thinking it would be a joke if, uh, Schreiber at one point, like, Blast, 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 right? And it empties. And then he looks down, and I'm like, he's going to fucking reload and unload on it again. But he brings up a shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> and then he takes a couple shots of that. Uh, it's just so excessive. It's like, what the... I hope you hit something with that. Yeah. It's amazing. What, Every what time somebody Schreiber's shoots something in this deal? movie, they, they use way too many uh, bullets. What's yeah. Shriver's deal? He's... Yeah, he's kind of, you know, like a, he's got some vibes. You know, I, I, uh, I haven't watched this in a long time, but I always remember every time I watch it, I always got the feeling that Liev Schreiber's character is like a serial killer yes. who decided to become a police officer in a small town so he could get away with shit. And they yes. don't have and, background. And no one would notice. Yeah. Right. And well, until you can it's legally in the middle of nowhere. Right, yeah. so he's always feels like he's up to something nefarious. He, well, the, but, the way it read was that, that early on, there's a scene where they're walking down the street and they're, they're, they hear the woman screaming or something way off in the distance. And uh, Schreiber's character starts walking away from the group. And I'm like, okay, it's like a siren song or something, right? This is something's putting the zap on his head. And this will explain his erratic behavior from there on out. Because Affleck even pulls him aside. He's like, dude, are you you with us? You okay, man? You know, he's like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm fine. But he acts weird from that point out. It's like, was he weird before that? I mean, we don't know. 
He he's, seemed he seemed pretty weird the whole time. He's yeah. weird the whole time. But that's because yeah. that was the scene I think we were introduced to him in. So it's like, was there some kind of subplot cut out of this movie or it was in the book about how, like, because he becomes like the central, like, I guess, flesh and blood antagonist of the movie. Yeah. Um, well, but uh, being, I always felt as. I was just saying before uh, that he was, you know, he's very skeevy with the girls and, you know, yes. it's the, the Harvey Weinstein effect. <laughs> I also, yeah, sure. I also feel like when we're first introduced to them, I always got the vibe that they weren't actually police. Like they were survivors from something and they just put on the police stuff because they knew some shit was going down. <laughs> I was, yeah. I, well, that, but that's, it's movie. weird that, you know, but I mean the, the fact that you had that, cause I mean, I had a lot of misperceptions about just the way that certain, maybe it's like a, the way a visual um, element is presented to you that I misread some stuff or was like, Oh, this they're, they're setting this up. And it's like, no, it was maybe I'm like, are they just being clumsy in the way that they're they're putting this stuff together? I don't know. Like, yeah. why am I, I mean, getting so many miscues off of this movie? I mean, I do, I do think it was I think it was strategic to make Lee Schreiber's character that way, so that we didn't exactly know. Like, is he already possessed? Is he being influenced? Like, where? I, I think that was strategic and it works because obviously we were all confused by it. But in that instance, I think it was. I don't think it was. Um, misrepresented i think they were strategic with that yeah because he takes a lot of glee when they're being attacked by things they're like Hoo-hoo, this is great when affleck's about to beat the shit out of him for being a yeah. leery and a guy uh he's like oh watch out because there's witness you know i mean he's just like on a different plane than everybody else yeah you know, like, yeah no, he's, and he's real his, weird and he's got possession. those fucking Dahmer glasses and this yeah, is creepy man. I seriously think that they were just like, "Hey, Scream Two made a fuck ton of money. Just show up and do that again, dude." Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So, well, he gets killed at this point. Boom! He's out of the movie. He gets attacked by this giant moth, which apparently eats his eyes, the soft tissues of his face, and sucks his brain out through his eyes. Which somehow. I remember watching that scene, and I was shocked the first time I watched that scene as a kid. I that that was. Yeah, I hadn't seen anything like that when I was that age. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's gory. I mean, there are gore effects in this. There, I don't know if they're presented mm-hmm. the best that they could be. They do try to camouflage a lot of it with a lot of flashing lights and, you know, uh, jarring editing to try and cut around from stuff. But you get glimpses mm-hmm. of a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this had to be a big budget movie, though, right? It feels expensive. Yeah, I mean, it's a Hollywood, you know, they... It's a Hollywood movie that was able to pump some cash into it. I think it didn't make its money back, surprisingly, but uh, <laughs> I think they were able to put some... I'm sure it's like a $40 million movie. I always go there. $40 million. Probably for... Uh, I'm going to guess 30 35 All right. This is where Holly's like, guys, I know. it was $11 I- million. <laughs> um, but while she's looking that up, so then... I know, $11 I, million. I, Did you see those I PlayStation 2 graphics? $30 million. <laughs> Yeah, the CGI is really bad when it shows up. Really bad. Oh, boy. But it's yeah, 1998. It is. The 90s were not a good decade for CG because they were trying to figure out how the hell it worked. Um, <laughs> and how they could uh, do the composites. Um, around this time, they discover a clue. Our intrepid group finds a clue written on lipstick in a sealed room with no windows that had a locked door. They break into it. Where did the person go? And they discover... A message that says uh, something. Timothy file fire file flight flight, flight. Ti- flight. Timothy flight the ancient enemy. Yes. We go. What the fuck? That is the most obscure clue in the goddamn world. But I hope this movie will explain it to us. Oh, we also find a, a pile of um, gold teeth pacemakers and jewelry all piled in a uh, on a bed somewhere these things just appear even to the characters like that wasn't there before as they walk through these rooms and you're like what uh-huh. the fuck is going on in this movie well, thank god timothy flight is going to tell us has been studying this for his entire life and can tell us what's going on <laughs> okay so what's going on so this is oh sorry uh, who is he and what does he do uh, Dr. Timothy Flights is, uh, I don't remember what he's, what his doctorate is in, but he's paleobiology, something like that. He's a former college professor. Um, and he was basically fired for his, um, 
extreme beliefs, essentially. Um, so he's been researching this theory like his whole life, and he's researching the flatworm theory. Was that what it was? What's the ancient enemy? Uh, well, what? yeah, his article is the ancient is the ancient enemy. Um, well, he writes for yeah. like the Weekly World News or something like that. The Weekly yeah. World Day, some you know. The, the the magazine that does the stuff about Bigfoot and the Bat Boy and all that stuff. Like a yeah. National Enquirer type thing. Yeah, yeah, and essentially he's talking about this weird phenomenon that has happened. And, and it's a true phenomenon. Like, we all have heard of it. It's, you know, the Mayan Empire, Roanoke, different civilizations that have just vanished for no reason and no one can explain why. Real things that have happened. Um, and he's been researching this and has done papers. And now he's writing for this, like, National Enquirer type paper about because um, nobody else will have him right that, that's where you go when you're a paleobiologist you know <laughs> you go to the national Enquirer. i love it hey this is what <laughs> what the this is what the men in black look at to find the worst scum of the universe so hey <laughs> it's worth something this is a reputable paper <laughs> well i should point out Real news. this is what else the movie does that's amazing uh, ben Affleck, because all the phones are dead in the town. None of the electricity works either, apparently, or whatever. The, 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 whatever the menace is, is able to turn lights off and all this stuff. None of the phones work. So Affleck, as the sheriff, is able to get on a radio, and he gets a half-garbled transmission out where he leaves, drops the doctor's name, and says, send everybody you got here. And so the FBI get a hold of this transmission, and instead of going to investigate what's going on in the town... The very first move is to go find the doctor and bring him to the town. Yeah. They're like, we know this guy. He used to work for us and we fired him, but we're going to trust him. We it's got amazing. This. It's yeah. an amazing leap of logic. So we get Peter O'Toole being brought by jet to the, the town. And uh, then the military shows up um, because they're decamped right outside the town. The whole town's quarantined because there's something weird going on there. The, the helicopters are doing flyovers. And so they have a big uh, ATV that has, um, you know, it's outfitted as a lab, and they're going to bring that in, and everybody comes in in spacesuits. Yeah, those, like, mobile tank things are, like, the most fake-looking tanks I've ever seen. I was wondering if they got them from another movie, or did they make Because I was wondering about that. Like, who makes these uh, vehicles? And I, I, think, like I feel like it's the same one for every movie. Like it's it it's just be. it's it's the military tank you you roll in when there's a massive citywide issue going on and we need military be. outposts. I'll bet it's the same one. the The only thing that's been updated is um, they don't do uh, blinking light science in them now. Now they actually have computer screens and all that shit. <laughs> now it's uh, it's it's enhanced the picture science. Yeah, yeah, right. that's and right. hunts yeah. and hunts. And if it's the future, they have that like holographic table in the middle of the oh that's yeah. very true where they can bring up all the data yeah, yeah. oh yeah, yeah they just have... gesture with their hand and bring yeah. up all the information they need yeah. right yeah. so here's that, that 2000 year old skeleton table. would look like today yeah mm -hmm. yeah the fucking tony stark table mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah because everybody has one the of those. ncis table yeah. i got one yeah. of those you got one of those I gotta say, it's my biggest fucking pet peeve when crime shows are like, let me enhance this image and then push a button and like the image is magically clearer. Okay, everyone at home, that's not how that works. You can't create pixels where there are none. Like that just, that's not, my God, it just, that drives me insane because like you can't make a video or a photo higher quality than it already is. You just can't. Are you telling me that movies have lied to us all our lives? I, I'm Don't sorry to this. break it to you, Colin, but yes. <laughs> oh man. Uh... Yeah, so, just look at uh, 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 Metal Storm. That's a lie right there. Lying to you since then, Colin. Because we, 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 I was promised a post-apocalyptic future? What are you saying? Yeah, and a storm of metal. Oh, a metal yeah. storm. Just the title. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you're yeah. right. And well, the destruction like of Jared's Sin. Yeah. 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 I didn't get that no, Nothing. Nothing. Um, Liars. So I think that the, the only, and for some reason, like in the nineties, this movie completely passed me by. I was aware that it was out there. I must've seen a trailer and then didn't uh, actually watch it and just ignored it for the rest of my life. Um, yeah. I'm very but, surprised you haven't seen this going. I know. So am I, but, and I haven't seen screamers either. And that was, I think this what? is the moment because, uh, because they were all in these spacesuits. I'm like, is that that movie with Peter Weller in it? Which was, uh, that's Screamers. I haven't seen that either. Wow. 
uh, it, that's not based on a Dean Koontz movie. Is that a Dimension Films movie? It's, it feels like it's, you know, whatever. I think it's, it's older than era. Dimension. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, um, we there's several more attacks at this point. I think these are the big attacks because all of the military guys get taken out by the thing. This is the point where I guess... Literally by the thing. Literally the thing. <laughs> okay, one of you are going to... You're going to have to tell us, because the listeners have been waiting, and they heard a tease about, you know, things right. attacking people and biting them in half. What is the thing in this movie? It's literally a dog with tentacles that shoot out of it. <laughs> That's it. Tentacles oh, that okay. shoot into yeah. people's face. It's a dog with tentacles. <laughs> well, yeah, except they're just black tentacles in this one instead of the yeah. bloody fleshy ones. From I couldn't the thing. believe this. Like, this is my first time watching this movie, too. And I was like, this is very blatantly ripping off a very well known movie. Yes. <laughs> Could not believe that they just kept going with it too. I was like, oh, so they're just gonna stick with this, huh? They're like, we're in too deep now. We can't back out of the thing. <laughs> so we'll just go if, with um, it. I wonder if it was because uh, obviously the thing has a heavy HP Lovecraft influence, and so that's whenever you get tentacles and stuff, I always goes, "This is an HP." Lo-. But the the amorphous shape shifting blob, uh, we never get uh, to see what this monster looks like. It is uh, sometimes it's these big black fleshy tentacles. Sometimes it's a dog. Sometimes it's a person. Sometimes it's a moth. Uh, so we never really get a good look at it. It's always, you know, when we do see it, it unfolds and something else falls out of it. So that's where the comparisons to the thing uh, come in. But it goes back to being a dog. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's where I have the, the thing connection problem with it, because like that's the thing, you know, like the thing is known for the dog starts it off and the dog ends the movie, you know, like and like, come on, man. It it's not crazy. like that movie wasn't out at this point. Oh, yeah. That was uh, famous. By by the 90s, the, the exactly. cult of the thing had grown to be what it is uh, today. Um, yeah, this feels like a very 90s or a very uh, the thing blob influenced. Well, the, yeah. so the monster is explained to us, and correct me where I leave a gap here, but it's basically a creature, a substance, a creature. This is also the X-Files movie, I think, was out at this point. They had the black or the TV show with the... Uh, the black oil was out. So it also yeah. kind of felt like it was a derivative of that, but it's this thing that lives deep beneath the ground. Um, it has an intelligence. It has a hive mind. Uh, it's able to kind of pool up and then it's a- it's uh, atoms or cells reconfigure and can um, form different shapes. It can attack something when it does much like the thing it absorbs whatever that thing uh, knew, because this is the flatworm theory that Holly was talking about earlier. Yes. Flatworms are known to, if uh, you know, one eats another one, it will gain the knowledge and be able to solve a, uh, a maze that the, the first one went through, the second one didn't see. But the second yes. one gets it on the first try. Which which this movie makes it sound like the, those results of those of those experiments were conclusive, but in reality... It's not that conclusive. We don't know for sure that that's what happens to flatworms. It's just, you know, a theory. Yeah. Could you imagine if people like <laughs> operated like that, then we'd be killing like Elon Musk and Stephen Hawking and be eating them like fucking crazy. I will eat him for his power. <laughs> <laughs> I like this. Uh, if it this, this has happened, right? Has this somebody made a movie about this? People yeah. eating people just for. Well, yeah, it's ravenous be, right? or, you know, yeah, I mean, ravenous, well, you're not the, the, you got their memory, but, you know, you get their power by consuming other, mm. the flesh of other people. Um, but there was an experiment I remember that was done, uh, it had something to do with like cells. They took cells of a person and put them, you know, in a lab and hooked them up to something. And then they sent, uh, it was this woman, then they sent her walking through like a uh, you know kind of shady part of town and when she got nervous the cells in the lab you know like a block away reacted so i guess that's uh. that whole idea that somehow like there is some kind of connection between uh your your body even if your body is not entirely intact that's right crazy. that's also kind of like the twin <laughs> the, the twin connection yeah. one twin that living miles away <laughs> Twins freak me out, man. I agree. Like, it's, 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 <laughs> oh, yeah. shit. All right. All right. Got to find a twin movie for next pick so I can freak, freak Holly me out. out. I, I'm sorry Good for pissing movie. off any twin listeners, but... I'm not. You freak me out. <laughs> it's... I'm going to... I'm bringing that uh, episode of Are You Afraid of the Dark with Tia and Tamara Maori. That's what I'm doing oh, next yeah. time. Oh, yeah. Oh, 
and, uh, oh god. <laughs> Well, the uh, or just twins with Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How, do, how do you feel about that? I'm okay I'd with that. that. <laughs> I'm okay with that one. <laughs> well, it ends up uh, after the the military are taken out. It then becomes down to science, which is uh, Peter O'Toole and Joanna going. Actually, there's only the four of the, the three of them. Four of them left. It's uh, uh, oh, sorry, Rose McGowan is still there. That's right. Uh, going. Uh, Affleck and O'Toole are basically our mm-hmm. heroes at this point, and um, it, they have to figure out how you actually defeat this thing. Um, the the movie's like getting really heavy in like the the the. It just seems like it's going like it's making those fantastical leaps that I guess Sean you were talking about. This is Dean Koontz, right? Yes. So this is the kind of stuff that he does. He aims big. <laughs> um, yes. So they figure. I'm trying yeah, to... when when we were watching this, because it's been a while since I saw this movie. So when we were watching this, and they were like explaining how they were going to take it down, and everything. As we're as we're watching it, I was like, not one of us is going to remember what they come up with just oh. now. Like none of us are going to remember this. <laughs> well, I think I got it, but I was just trying to remember like the steps that they took to get there because this is one of those movies that relies on that kind of. Um, not uh, like the divine spark of in- inspiration, but just like everybody seems to go like, you know what it probably is. And they don't even say that. They're like, this creature has existed under the earth for 70 million millennia, you know, or whatever. And everybody just accepts it as fact. And I'm like, these guys, this, you're just coming up with this shit out of your ass. You <laughs> no idea. And then the movie is like, no, that's totally what it is. Um, they come up. I mean, with- well, you know, what, what else are you going to do? <laughs> Well, they have to, because Affleck is basically the thing. Okay, the thing begins to communicate with them. First of all, it kills a bunch of military dudes and apparently takes possession of their bodies. Uh, The scene in which it communicates originally, one of the dead military guys comes up, opens his mouth really wide, and without moving his mouth, the creature talks through him. It also makes phone calls. It calls people up on the telephone and... Anytime you have radio waves, you can hear something talking. And it's a then, lot like virus. A lot Dude, like I virus. I was really getting virus flashbacks, especially because it like knows everything. Like it yeah. has the collective knowledge of like all of humanity. And I was like, oh no, 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 no. <laughs> it also shares another thing that all fucking 90s movies like this do. Eventually, Did we talk to it on a computer? <laughs> eventually, we talked to it on the computer. <laughs> So, uh, how do we explain? Okay, so wait. What was virus? I am. What, what do you call himself? I am alive. I am aware. I am aware. I am aware. Sphere, <laughs> you remember, did it. They all do it. These these super intelligent beings always have to choose to communicate with us through a computer. I, now, one thing. One thing I liked though that about uh, there was a few moments in this movie that I I liked that they didn't do the norm. Like when we were watching it and. Um, one of the like FBI agents was was attacked and like you know infected or you know whatever uh, absorbed you know by this monster and the other dude without even barely hesitating just unloads on the guy and I was like thank you thank you for not hesitating and just ta- trying to take him out like I appreciate that because most movies are like I can't shoot my buddy it's like no shoot the fucker like I was happy yeah. that they did that and that um, nice. yeah right there was a few moments of like. I appreciate that you did that. The other thing I appreciated is in the moment in this movie, when they figure out that the the creature thinks it's the devil, like it thinks it's bad. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what you're acknowledging that you're the end. You're acknowledging that you're bad. That doesn't happen. Normally they're like, I'm here to save you. The mankind is the virus and I'm going to save the world. No, he's like, I'm the devil. Like I'm the bad guy. This is my role. It learned about Christianity (laughs) and then identified with the devil so much. So it was like, well, I'll take on that role. Yeah. I was like, I kind of love that. Because it says the the, the people that it attacked when it was killing them thought that it was that they were being attacked by demons. Yeah. So it said, well, then I must be a demon. (laughs) <laughs> right. It would be great if it cut from that to Topher Grace in Spider-Man 3. Oh my god. When he's oh. covered in black and he's like, I like being evil. It makes me happy. <laughs> That's basically this monster. You know, Sean, now that you say that, I kind of want to do a rewatch of Spider-Man 3. 
and see like run a timer for when it the cringe is so much i can't watch it anymore <laughs> you know Dan- it's definitely minutes. dancing it's yeah. the da- it's the it's the walking down the street oh okay. can't do it. minutes the finger guns <laughs> yep it's bad uh well, this thing, it uh, at least in virus, you know, we had the idea that there was some kind of electronic being uh, that had, you know, hacked a computer system or whatever. This one talks them through an electron microscope because they have its cells under the microscope is somehow able to convert that into speech and goes to voice mode. We see the code run, whatever. So now that we've established yeah. that the thing thinks it's the devil, Affleck, brilliant man that he is, says it. The bomb, it just, Colin. That's, that's right. He's the looking bomb. For. Uh, he's the bomb in Phantoms. He says the thing only thinks it's immortal, but it's just an animal, right? It's a it's an actual earthbound phenomenon. It's a it's a creature that lives here. So there's got to be a way to kill it. This gives Peter O'Toole the brainstorm that because we're in a you know government truck mobile lab and we have all these microbes including man-made microbes oh he analyzes the substance i think because the thing wants him to be its prophet and right right the gospels gospel. <laughs> right he has to be the witness right um he determines that the substance it's made of is basically a compound similar to it's like carbon uh carbon it was basically a, a substance similar to actual oil that's right this is a movie about a killer oil slick that is able to <laughs> bubble up out of the earth and turn into different shapes. Okay. So not unlike the plot of Fern Gully is what you're saying. Yes. <laughs> or the X file. Oh, keep going back there. No, um, well, you can rip every, You can say everything was. <laughs> there were enough episodes of the X Files. You could say everything was an X Files episode. Yeah, I like Fern Gully. Oh, that was that was a major arc. The black. I mean, uh, kept how was it? Up. Oh yeah. The the oil spill slash toxic cloud was voiced by Tim Curry in Fer- Fern Gully. Yes. So, so this yeah. is around. Have the- you not seen Fern Gully, Colin? Because nope. you should. Nope, I haven't seen it. Robin Williams Robin does Williams a voice in that movie. Yeah, it's it's a great movie. Yes, I saw it's the about remake. <laughs> I saw the remake. It's about it was called saving the Avatar. Trees. Oh God, yeah, that's why yeah, I don't need to go. watch Avatar. Yeah, we've got Fern Gully. We don't need <laughs> Avatar. Is there singing in Avatar? Yes. Oh God! Now I really don't want to yeah, watch the Navi, it. They don't they sing or something? There's singing on the soundtrack anyway. Um, so <laughs> they uh, determine that because it's basically an oil slick. This is coming to us from the era. I assume if we look back, we're going to find out that the Exxon Valdez, uh, you know, accident happened a few years earlier because it also brought us Waterworld from I think around the same period of time. Um, so basically the way to kill it is because of a situation like the Exxon Valdez oil spill, uh, scientists have come up with a microbe that eats oil. And you can drop this thing into an oil slick and it'll make it disappear. It'll eat it up. And so we're going to use this against the creature, much like, you know, it's a bacterium. This is what you do with aliens. Yeah, ever since War of the Worlds. <laughs> Colin, Colin, I am so glad you absorb movies the way you do, because <laughs> I did not remember any of this shit. Really? Really, it's and your, I've seen this multiple times. I was just saying you brought the movie. Yeah, I've seen this a lot. I did <laughs> nothing. Wow. So you're really? saying that the movie just got, it evaporates, like, like this stuff, the movie itself evaporates from the mind. As there are things that it. stick with me, but that's not one of them. <laughs> well, in She's just like Ben Affleck. Yeah. Moth eating face. <laughs> shooting like monster. Like I, There are things I remember, but not that. I think the image I'm going to take away, hopefully if I take away uh, anything, is um, that Liev Schreiber keeps on showing up as a phantom. And yes. in yes. one of the cases when he's trying to pursue the girl's they unload on him like everybody does in this movie with like every bullet in the gun uh, and they blast his legs off. He lands on the floor and of course he's still alive and he shoots out all these tentacles. Then you get like he's a hat. He's a torso being pulled by tentacles. I'm like, OK, it's not a this bad. Is, yeah, this is what the, <laughs> the scene I will never forget from this movie. It was pretty unsettling. I didn't. I didn't like it. I didn't like the way the practical effect moved across the floor either. Yeah, it was oh, like one of the best things that they pulled off because all the CG looked yeah. bad. 
yeah. the practical stuff actually was like you know like it was like that's an image right there that's you know yeah Kinda and reverse cool. photography of all the tentacles coming off the pipes and everything are going onto the pipes as it were. And he like makes a joke while he's crawling across the floor too, which adds to the unsettlingness. Doesn't he say yes. something like how low can you go or something like that? <laughs> yeah, he does <laughs> a little well. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he was just full of bad, bad jokes. I think when he walked into that room, it's like, Oh, you got guns now. You're not gonna shoot me and on our man, would you? And they go, ch -ch -ch. he goes, Ooh, I guess so, or something like that, and then they blast it's him. Like, it's like that was a, that was a stupid question. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So I mean, he's, probably, <laughs> he's probably having a, right there. Yeah, <laughs> Liam Sharper's having a great day. You leave him alone. Well, they get down into the sewers. The climax always has to take place in the sewers. Uh, ben yeah. Affleck, of course, goes down. Well, they they use um, Peter O'Toole as bait at one point mm -hmm. uh, for the it first. Calls them all out. Right, because that's the idea. It was like, well, if we're going to poison this giant oil slick, we have to get it you know, all in one place. And of course, yeah, the budget, I do like this scene. Yeah. Maybe the budget doesn't allow for them to actually, you know, have like a big underground chasm kind of thing. I, with, yeah. I could not find the budget. I'm, I looked the other day and I looked again tonight. I don't know what the budget was. But I know what it grossed, but I have no idea what the budget was. Well, instead of finding a big underground chasm, what they do is uh, he basically taunts the thing into, you know, it, it, he plays to its superiority complex and baits it up out of the ground, in which case all of the dead townspeople, I assume, uh, it takes the shape of all the dead townspeople and they all show up in the street and I'm like, ooh, but they're just standing there. It's really spooky. Phantoms. Yeah. yeah. You know? All in the, the snow. phantoms. Yeah. Yeah. In the, in the Silent Hill snow. Mm -hmm. And... um. I'm like, oh, we're going to have a zombie movie or something here. But no, they all, uh, well, I think what we're supposed to get, probably in the description of this action, is going to be cooler than what we actually see. But the thing um, takes all of their bodies. So it basically melds all these fleshy components, all these bodies together into a big, giant, like a tornado or cyclone of twisted together human shapes. Mm -hmm. Can okay. you imagine if they had had the budget to practically do that? Like right. have everyone standing there and then show everybody like s slowly melting down into black goo. Kind of like, like violent, violent, violently in order to form the big thing. That would have been cool. That would have like been cool. Slither or <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> just on a bigger scale. Uh, but yeah, it looks atrociously bad. Uh, big <laughs> yeah, CGI, cyclone, CGI, which they put this right up there with that CGI shark. Yeah. They shoot a uh, syringe into the thing and it kills it. And it's like, okay, but the rest of it, you know, is still around in little puddles that are walking around like human beings and dogs and whatever. And Liv Schreiber, uh, they kill him because I think that's what they do, right? They blast him. He's unfolding and, blah, and all this stuff. They shoot him with a syringe. And then um, Affleck goes down into the, in the cellar, in the cellar, into the, the sewers. So we actually forgot to set up his character's big emotional arc mm -hmm. right oh, this is so like well, well so did that. Like, you can see it coming a mile away i hate this and like so my husband was watching this with me he's read a lot of dean and coon's books and he was like yeah he does this in like every book <laughs> that, that that like the main character has some sort of like emotional hang-up over a bad choice he made in the past that he has to get through in the third arc and like this we've we saw this in it yeah. Like we've seen this so many times. I don't need to see it again. Well, I think it's always, that's the thing that writers do, right? It's like you have to set up your protagonist with some type of, uh, I mean, they have to have an arc. There's, you got to end up somewhere different than you start. But yeah. yeah, but it's always a kid dying. Yeah, it's always, because I think, I think that's the easiest. That's like the fallback, yeah. like default. Like if I really don't want to think too hard about it. You know, he's got a traumatic experience in the past. In this case, because they're always damaged by something. In this case, he was an FBI agent, but he quit or was fired because he shot a child who pointed a plastic gun at him. And I'm like, this, oh, we haven't heard this specific one a hundred times before. Uh, so then he became the sheriff of a small town, which is like, again, not exploring the psychology of a guy like, I mean, if you did that, I don't know if you'd even be able to pick up a gun again. <laughs> Wouldn't you, know? you be like an alcoholic that like can't get your shit together? Or you like? I mean, come on, real life? Sergeant Sergeant Al Powell got through it. He the, he Ben Affleck can get through it too. There you go. I was like, you go become a bus driver or something. I don't know, but anyway, just uh, sit behind a desk. Yeah. So the thing 
knows that this is his uh, weak spot, his psychological sore point, right? And mm-hmm. the only way, because I'm sitting there going like, well, how do they know what the, the kid looks like, right? This is in his mind. He hasn't been absorbed. So how does it know? There's a throwaway line of dialogue earlier where he says to Peter O'Toole that basically because the, uh, the, the, all the townspeople have been absorbed, mm-hmm. they know everything about him. Right. Right. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah. He, all, all he's got to do is eat that one lady, like uh, at the coffee shop, who he talks to all the time, and there you go. Things got I his mean, whole life story. I guess if like he got fired from being an FBI agent over this, and then came to work in this small town because of that, that would be like the talk of the town. Like he murdered yeah. a kid, and now well, he's and, our sheriff. Well, and I mean, at this point, two of his coworkers have been killed, so I'm sure they know. And here's a go. I'm going to, I'm going to tie this all together and make it all make sense. Somebody had a clipping of that incident and had a picture of the boy and the camera lingers on it. I'm like, I got to remember this for something. And that's why it's because whoever had that clipping knew what the boy looked like. Ergo, the monster knows what the boy looked like. Although Was how it Ben Affleck like the one that had it? Yeah. He kept it in his wallet. Yeah. Damn he it. kept it in his wallet. Okay. You got me. <laughs> That no, whole scene was him explaining it. <laughs> Just but, like but, somebody but again, had. But again, like his two coworkers, his partners that he's like out with all the time, like I'm sure they know. It's not a know? secret. Maybe yeah. maybe he just, that's his way of saying hello. Hi. <laughs> Mur- murder, <laughs> murder the child once. How you doing? Yes, it's me. <laughs> maybe I did that's this. It. Maybe he told everybody this story. It's like, how, it's like how if you're a sex offender, you have to go around and tell everyone that yeah. you I noticed you have kids. Funny story. <laughs> like, like, hi. Hi, I'm the new sheriff. <laughs> this took a dark turn. By the way, I'll be protecting you from here on out. Also, I've murdered a child. Yeah. <laughs> Don't wow. worry, you're safe, though. You're an adult. Yeah. I only yeah. <laughs> That was an accident. Probably won't happen again. <laughs> what is, what's the likelihood? Um, he ends up, uh, but he, you know, so the little demon boy is talking to him and threatening him or whatever, and he, but catches the uh the vials of the stuff the 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 mutagen or whatever the microbe and so affleck's able to shoot it and the stuff gets all over the creature and it melts him and boom that's it done He's happy get his line ending in. yeah it's not a happy ending though like all oh there's also like a romance i mean i was happy it was over well, this isn't the end, though. But there, well, there's also right. a romance subplot-ish that's never developed. There's an attraction between him and Joanna going, so we assume that they're going to go off and have babies. And we don't know what happened to Rose McGowan because she's in the movie, but it really doesn't matter. Her character doesn't really contribute to anything. So the movie ends, for the most part. And then we cut to um, uh, uh, Peter O'Toole. Peter O'Toole's on the news. Yeah. So what's going on here? So, he's telling the world. Yeah, he's he's telling the world. Like he, it's like he an told, unsolved mysteries. He told the creature, like I will tell the world about you, and that's at the end of the movie. He's like, you know, and the creature's dead, but it actually won because I'm going to tell the world, just like I said I would. Yeah, he and, gets um, a TV special out of it. Yeah. Um, yeah, and a book. Yeah, and we see that this is being watched by uh, patrons of a bar, assuming we're in another little small town. And people are making jokes about it or whatever. Or that we pan over because somebody thought that was what they were saying was funny. And who's sitting at the end of the bar? I know Holly looks shocked. I was shocked. Jesus. Weren't we all shocked? So shocked. So shocked. Yep. Liv Schreiber sitting there. And then his line through the whole thing is like, you want to see something? He says you that. Something? You want to see something? Want to see something really scary? Yeah. That's what I thought he was going to say. <laughs> That's a line for those of you who don't know from the Twilight Zone movie, which predates this one and did that better the first time around. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, so and then it ends with, uh, you know, I mean, it's one of these opening. It's like a John Carpenter ending. You know, we're uh, we're kind of leading off. The, yeah. the uh, apocalypse has only been, um, you know, it's been stopped delayed. for right now. Yeah, delayed there. Thank you very yeah. much. It's going to. It's always coming happen eventually nothing you can do yeah. about it uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> yep uh, i was just thinking like the 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 end the, the blob ended that way i thought about the blob yeah. a lot during this movie also yeah me too yeah. Uh, yeah. guys in suits you know dropping charges down uh you know uh manhole covers in a small town and 
you know, some kind of fluid like creature that lives. Um, but the, the blob ending, I don't know. I mean, it just, it had, uh, it felt like it earned that moment where this is just like, this is something that these movies do. Here's this scene. Okay. Get out of the theater. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sorry. Are you Peter O'Toole ushering people out of the theater and like, <laughs> you, goodbye. Yeah. Thank you for watching the movie. Yeah. I think I would have preferred that. Yeah. What it was like, and the, nothing, nothing else to see here, folks. Uh, that happens at the end of a movie, doesn't it? Yeah. Can Can we get the Can we get the Ferris Bueller ending, but with Peter O'Toole? Yeah. What are you uh, still yeah. doing here? The movie's <laughs> over. <laughs> yeah. Like he said, Phantom, like it, Phantom's gone. They sh- they go back to him sitting in his chair with his like his mahogany books. He's like, "You're still here." <laughs> well, I Hello, sipping I didn't, his tea. I didn't stick yeah. with it all the way to the very end of the credit. So who knows? Maybe the, did that happen? That's oh. a no. That's no. a tales from the crypt episode right there. <laughs> did any true. of us make it all the way to the end of the credits? Oh no, 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 no. no. Well, listener, so you this probably it. <laughs> nobody has. There's an ending that nobody's ever seen. Nobody <laughs> stuck around. <laughs> That would be funny. <laughs> I just recently found out there was a secret ending to Constantine. I didn't, never stuck around Constantine all the way to the end. I don't think anyone oh, is. The, the Shia LaBeouf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, um, So anyway, listener, you stuck with us this far, but we haven't told you what we thought of the movie. We're going to do that. We're going to tell you each one of us. We'll let you know whether or not we recommend it. We'll find out if it's Freak Show approved uh, for you to watch. But uh, before that, we're going to answer some of your mail. And to do that, we're going to need the help of our mailman, and his name is Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Oh, no, that's that's just a phantom of Igor. That's not Igor. Oh, that's just goo. That's Igor, just a pile of goo. Igor wants you to know that Ben Affleck was the bomb in Phantoms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Igor and a bunch astute, of other people. Astute observation, Igor. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, we want Igor to bring us your mail. And in order to do that, uh, you're going to have to follow along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Freak Show. Or Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. Or you can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. And you can follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. We actually forgot to mention, thank you, MF Mad, for bringing this to our attention, but we made two inductees to the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame off of this movie tonight. So here you go. I know what these movies are that, Rose McGowan? that they're in. No, Leah Schreiber okay. is on the wall for Phantoms and what other uh-huh. two movies that we have done. Scream, Scream 2. two. Yes. It's another 90s thing, wasn't it? It was. I feel like we just watched it. And intelligence talks to people on a computer in that movie as well. Oh, my God. What is it? It wasn't. Don't say it. Don't say it. Uh, It was recent. It was pretty recent, wasn't it? Uh, Maybe a year ago. It was Sphere. That Sphere. Damn it. Yep. And Another Holly pick. Uh, Nick, With the, Nick, a lot of my previous picks have come up tonight. <laughs> uh, and Nikki Cat, who's in this movie, um, what's Nikki Cat like most famous for? Boston Legal or Boston Public or something like that? Oh yeah, I forgot he was in Boston Legal. Yeah. Well, he's been right. in three movies that we did. He was a child actor in Gremlins. He was also in The Burbs, and now he's in Phantoms. So there you go, Nikki. There you Kat. go. Uh, Alex okay. Nash wrote in and said, uh, I discovered your podcast on Pandora while searching horror movie reviews. And my first listen was my favorite werewolf movie ever dog soldiers. Now I'm oh, hooked hey. and you guys all rock. Oh, thanks. Oh, thanks. Good, good choice for first listen. Yeah. 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 Dog soldiers. Great. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Now I'll go listen to Miami connection. And we hope you're listening <laughs> to this episode to hear us uh, say thank you. About Don't tonight. worry, there'll be plenty of werewolf episodes, too. <laughs> yeah. I'll make Welcome sure to the it. family. Um, about tonight's movie, Phantoms. Uh, Dave Forbes. Toby Walklin. Is that how you say it? Walklin? Yeah. Am I doing that Walklin. right? Yep. Uh, Stephen Hayes. <laughs> Travis Legler. Jesus. Teresa Ann. Fresno Film Buff, Jacob Kotner, and Novatu Judoka all had to tell us that Yo Affleck was the bomb in Phantoms. Thank you. Yes. 
Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> uh, Michael so Whitaker. Let's <laughs> just like, just look up two comments. Somebody said it. <laughs> Oh, somebody it's was right. actually like, first. <laughs> yeah. and wow, I'm sorry, that. I should have given you credit for saying first. Uh, first. Oh, uh, it wouldn't have been funnier if you would have just read each person's name and then the comment over, over and over again. We can redo this. <laughs> I can do that and cut it in. No, we're not going to redo uh, that. Right, you do it by yourself after the episode's yeah. over. Uh, now, you know, now you know how I felt about the fucking Chuck Norris jokes. That's exactly how I felt. <laughs> Uh, Michael Whitaker wrote in. He said this is actually somewhat of an underrated movie. I only watched it because of Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, but I was pleasantly surprised with what I watched. Giant killer moths, creepy Lee of Schreiber, oil monsters. This movie has it all. It's got a lot. It's surprising what it has. There's a lot of stuff in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> None of those are ring endorsements. <laughs> at all. This it has it has things. There's some stuff in this movie. Well, uh, Nuvato Judoka says this is still peak '90s horror. Yet this completely passed me by. Never Very seen an image, horror. a trailer, or a poster until you posted this. I didn't oh, even wow. know the cast. The only thing I knew about it was what Jay and Silent Bob told me. And I look forward to stepping back into the '90s for this. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, he didn't say it. Thank you, God. I thought I thought we were going into it being said again. I'm just like, well, no. Wow. I think I'm pretty sure he actually commented yeah, he twice. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Robin Linneman Silverberg wants us to know that this was filmed right up the hill from him in Georgetown, oh. Colorado. Nice. 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 It's a very scenic area. It's there. very pretty. Like, uh, yeah. I, think, I think Colin pointed out that there was actual like uh, actual horse. Um, what am I looking for here? A hitching post. A hitching post. Thank you. And uh, I was like, I love this little town. It's so charming. <laughs> there you go. George. I County, live there. Colorado. Yeah. Got to check it out whenever you're out that way. Uh, Rick Danford said this was a great book. A so-so movie with a convoluted en- ending if memory serves. Well, it might be right. If you're, if you're a Dean Koontz fan and you haven't read this, I've heard the book's actually really good. So Yeah, I'd read this. I'd read the book. Yeah. What's his most famous book? Most famous? Yeah. It's Odd Thomas is him, right? That movie. Yeah, Odd Servant, Thomas the is Servant him. of Twilight. I remember being like, "That's a cool title." He um, did some Frankenstein books. Team no, right, they made that cool. into a show. Martin Scorsese produced that TV show for TNT. Frankenstein. Which one? Frankenstein. Oh yeah, Frank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Most famous book. That's interesting. What's that one? It's like frenzy or hatred or oh, I can't remember what. And you just named them all. Like that's yeah. what he does. He does, his, <laughs> he does those one-word titles. And- Okay. Well, uh, about last week's episode, which was Uninvited, Gary Macon says, I watched the Rift Tracks version of Uninvited, thinking the movie wouldn't be worth it on its own, but it seemed to be pretty entertaining. That movie was batshit crazy. Yeah, uh, turns definitely out worth it on Novato Judoka saw that one, too. He said, it's a creepy weekend at Bernie's with a dash of critters and a hint of aliens to hair, yeah. dance moves, poison, and so much implication. Shout out to Rob Estes for a show I've never watched, but I've seen in the intro for a million times, Silk Stockings, as I finished watching <laughs> yeah. wrestling those 90s nights. Oh, yeah. that was Oh, yeah. That was on right after wrestling. Yeah. Right. Hell, yeah. Like so, that. so you get those stockings coming up. Yeah, yeah. Hell, yeah. Did you catch that? So much implication. Yeah. <laughs> That's a deep cut. It's always sunny reference. Yeah. Love it. Because I was sitting there going like, what does that mean? Because I'm not it's, a man it, If you watch It's Always Sunny, you know. <laughs> yeah. uh, about the previous week's episode, which was The Town That Dreaded Sundown, Rye Snodgrass writes in and says, I've been listening for quite some time. I'm a big fan of you guys, and I love what you guys do. You dudes are badass. Listening to the new episode, I heard you guys mention Bigfoot, and if you guys are looking for a damn good, serious, creepy, eerie, and very well done Bigfoot film, you should check out Exists. Kind of a found footage movie from the same guy that did the first Blair Witch film. So that's Eduardo Sanchez. I think the I'll definitely guy. check it out. Yeah, yeah that sounds, it's, that it's, cool. it's like free on uh, Tubi and I think Voodoo as well. There nice. I'll have to well, look into that. Uh, G Money also recommend this is see this is we we talked about Tom Dreaded Sundown, but it's directed by the guy who did The Legend of Boggy Creek. So there's a lot yeah. of Bigfoot. Uh, I G- asked for Bigfoot movie recommendations oh, okay. too. Yeah. Because uh, I can't find any good ones, so. Well, G Money said you got to check out Exists. You got to check out Primal Rage, Abominable, and Big Legend. Are some solid Bigfoot affairs. Abominable is the best overall, but they all have enjoyable Bigfoot carnage. Uh, cool. 
Mike Welch also said Sasquatch, Abominable, Devil on the Mountain, and Big Legend are the ones to see. And uh, on that episode, I said that the uh, this is retraction, right? Got to do retraction we, on, on our show. Uh, I said that the poster art was done by Ralph, Ralph McQuarrie, which it was. But I said that he was uh, also the artist on Abominable and uh, the Back to the Future stuff. Yeah. I was wrong. Travis Legler uh, points out that, hey, Colin, Drew Strozen did the Back to the Future posters. I know it's a nitpick, but just FYI. Well, you were absolutely correct, sir. Drew Struzan did the Star Wars posters. He did Back to the He's the one you know. I, Mc- he's the I, famous I, one, yeah. Yeah. I truly I truly thought that uh, Brent was going to be the one correcting you. <laughs> Not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> like, that isn't who... Yeah, uh, McQuarrie was the, um, he was like a produ- uh, the, the guy who did the, well, I was going to say production designer. He did art for Star Wars um, that you've, you've probably seen. If you had that book, The Splinter of the Mind's Eye, they had like one of his posters. I mean, he did all the production art on that. I guess he designed Darth Vader. Maybe. Oh, yeah. I remember seeing those pictures, those drawings. Yeah. So that brings us to the most exciting part of the episode where we throw tonight's movie Phantoms to the dogs. We tear it apart and see who liked it and who didn't. And we're going to start with Michaela. What did you think about Phantoms, yo? Well, this was my first time watching it. And if I'm being honest, when I hear Ben Affleck is in something, I, I don't think it's a negative. I just think Ben Affleck has made a career off of natural lazy charisma i don't feel like he ever really puts in a lot of effort into anything he does i feel like he kind of just coasts off of his own personality uh i I don't feel like i've ever seen him push himself to do anything outside of his comfort zone ever on film um so that already i'm like okay well i know what to expect there um hey it the title is confusing the title doesn't really correlate with what happens in the movie i was not expecting a body horror movie um i was not expecting parts of virus and parts of the thing and it and the blob and um i kind of didn't know how i was feeling for the most of the movie about it until we got to the part with leave schreiber tentacle like crawling across the floor and then i was like okay that's worth the price of admission alone because that was really unsettling it was really cool and I wish they would have stuck to more practical things like that. So I think I would give it like a C plus, maybe like a B minus. Uh, it's always good to visit the 90s and have the 90s stank on something. I'm kind of surprised this movie doesn't have more of a cult following and I haven't heard more about it. Like I've heard nothing about this movie. I've never like I've never seen trailers. I've never never heard anything about it. Um, but the title definitely had me thinking I was going to be watching like a more of like a ghost story or like a paranormal kind of thing. Um, So that was a surprise to me, how gory and like how many body horror effects there were. Knocking off the thing is not great, but it is still kind of cool how like the tentacles shoot out of the dog and hit everyone in the face and stuff like that. So, yeah, I think I'm going to give it like a C plus, B minus. I would I would give it like a light recommend. I think if you haven't seen it, it's definitely worth a watch, especially for the like how many different weird scares it tries to use and employ. It tries to keep you guessing. And I think that's worth watching. So. I'm going to go with Sean. You're next. Sean, what did you think of Phantoms? Yay. Uh, Phantoms. Well, there's a reason why they say uh, Affleck is the bomb in Phantoms. They don't say the Phantoms is the bomb. <laughs> <laughs> because, because it's not. Um, at, at least uh, uh, <clears throat> in my opinion. Um, I was left kind of flat by this movie tonight. Um, I don't find it to be an exciting movie. I don't know. Um, if only I saw it like maybe a couple times when I was younger and it was never one that really like stuck around. You always remember it, but I like a lot of what they did in this movie. Um, I like the, I like when people got infected or especially the one scene in the church where the people got infected by the virus and kind of how they communicate um, with their mouth open. And um, I mean, but anything I think I'd be liked from this movie, we've seen in other movies. So I'd rather just go watch those other movies because this one's not quite, doing it for me. Affleck seems too young to be a sheriff. Um, there's some scenes in this are just fucking annoying. There was one where I think all the sirens and everything are going off in the middle of the town that went on for like ever. Uh, I was about to shut the damn TV off. Um, yeah. No, I'm not feeling phantoms. 
Affleck was all right in Phantoms. <laughs> that, that, that's how I'm going to leave it. He was it. passable like he is in everything. Just passable. Yeah, it doesn't come out as well. Yo, Affleck was passable in Phantoms. <laughs> that's about it. So uh, I'm going to say no. I'm, there's way more other stuff that will give you more of a... Just watch the blob. He'll be fine. So I'm going to pass on Phantoms. Colin. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I think the reason, Michaela, you haven't heard anything about this movie is because, uh, everybody's deliberately trying to forget that they ever saw it or were a part of it or anything. This movie's fucking horrible. I hated it, to be honest with you. And I think, but I, I'm like, okay, was it like offensively a bad movie? I mean, it, it, it's a movie that, uh, I think, you know, Sean was hitting on it. It's flat. I was bored through most of it, but because that's, I've seen other horror movies and I've seen all the ones that this one specifically is riffing on it's like there's not really any um scenes i mean they're they're using you know like a different scientific explanation to basically give you the alien monster that you know eats people and has tentacles and whatever so it's like okay Mm -hmm. it's a new concept for why it is what it is but it's like a bizarre you know uh, extremely convoluted one where you're like what how what does it do how does it work and all this other I actually <laughs> kind of like the science behind it, how it absorbs the knowledge of people. And because it absorbs the knowledge, it thinks it's like a demon or a devil. I'm like all for that. That's mm-hmm. actually a pretty cool explanation. The rest of it, whatever. But science wise, I kind of liked it. Yeah. Well, I <laughs> Colin did not. That, no, I was like, eh, whatever. I mean, because they just come up with, you know, I mean, here's a new thing to explain this. The scenes seem like they're taken from other movies. This is a movie without any characters in it. It has faces. It has people that you recognize running around in it. Um, but there's no characters here. I mean, they're just spouting dialogue and yelling stuff. Peter O'Toole, I thought, probably came off the best because of his experience. Uh, you know, he's everybody's committed at least you got that, you know, there's nobody really slumming it. Even Affleck, I think, you know, uh, I think it was Michaela was saying, it's like, he does have this kind of like lazy, um, easy going nature. He is yelling, I guess, at a couple scenes at directly at Peter O'Toole. I'm like, look, Affleck's getting upset, but, um, he has that, I suppose somewhere that's a charisma or star power that he brings to it. So it's like, I can't fault him for this. It's just the movie, the whole enterprise itself is like worthless and derivative and boring and the bad CG. And it just has that the hallmark of all with a few notable exceptions, all nineties Hollywood horror movies suck through and through. And this is just (laughs) an example like, yep. And there's another one. Okay, maybe the better version of this is like The Faculty or something. I don't know, for another dimension of uh, films uh, from that era. Um, you keep The Faculty out of your horror mouth, my friend. We did The <laughs> Faculty on this show. You can actually we go did. back and listen to it. Um, I'm, I'm not Colin, gonna, always selling. Yeah, I'm not going to recommend it, and I guess that's the final <laughs> word on that. Uh, Holly, what did you think of Phantoms? <laughs> Um, yeah, no, I, I don't think any of you are wrong. Like I, I'm agreeing with what everyone is saying. Um, it's one of those movies that obviously I have a bit of nostalgia with it. Um, so I know that that's part of the reason that I, I have fond memories of it. It's not because of the actual movie necessarily. Um, but I do think, I do think there are parts of it that are very good. There's because there are parts of it that are very memorable to me. And I think as to me, sometimes that just makes a movie as if there are things that I, I take away with it and I just don't forget. And in this, it's, it's, it's the imagery, purely the imagery, um, you know, on the moth in the face and the, the tentacle across the floor. Like there's some really cool things happening in this movie and conceptually it's, it's, it's pretty cool. I, I, I agree with what Sean was saying. You know, I like the, um, I like the kind of the, the science behind it. I like the folklore behind it. I like, I like the idea. Like I said, conceptually, I think this is a really cool, um, a really cool con- uh, idea. Um, but I agree. It's, a, it's, it's boring. It's a pretty boring movie. I, it's obviously ripping off a lot of different movies. So I am torn because I, I understand what everyone is saying. Um, but I got. I gotta say, I, I kind of agree with Michaela. There's some things in this that I think you should watch it just to see some of the some of the effects, some of the things that surprise you. 
Um, because there are a lot of things in this movie that I, I, I remember not seeing, not, I didn't see it coming when I saw this originally. Um, and I, I, I always enjoy that. I always enjoy when a movie surprises me. I think we all kind of experience that not many things surprise us anymore. Um, and I remember being surprised by this. So that, that to me, I think is worth recommending it for. Um, but I can see how this would be a way better book. I don't think Dean Koontz should ever write a movie that he just shouldn't. Probably not. Just I, I don't, the books did. Yeah. I don't think he should write a movie at all. The, there, there's the plot sucks. The characters suck. Like, I, I don't think that that's anything to, to recommend, but I do think that there's some imagery in this. That's pretty cool. And I think you should watch it just for that. Um, so I agree. I like that Michaela said it's a light recommend because I'll agree with that. I think it's a light recommend. I don't hate it. I'm not offended by it. I got some knowledge attached to it, but it's a sleepy day movie. It's a sleepy day movie. Um, but yeah, light recommend for Phantoms. Not the bomb. Not the bomb. <laughs> not the bomb. Well, it's a split feature. We've got two light recommends and two no's. There you go. Uh, okay, well, I guess uh, that brings us to what we're going to watch next week. It'll be filled by Colin. Colin. No, 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 it's not Tom Bungle. That's right. <laughs> it's a sale. Yeah, it's a sale. This is part of the bundle, wasn't it? No, I got this one. It was originally part of the bundle, but uh, then they released it separately. Okay. I think it was through the sound. It's on Amazon Prime. So you know, yeah. I, I just want to hook you with this, okay? It is a mystery, and the movie at some point stops and gives you like a minute to solve it. <laughs> Next week on Saturday Night Pre-Show, until then, Boils and Ghouls, the basement is going dark. <laughs>